Hi, I'm really sorry that I can't be with you today, but uh, instead of me actually being there physically, I'm going to uh, give you this recording. So hopefully it will be of some use. We're going to look today at the issue of designing a research project. So what I'm going to try and cover today is a little bit about choosing your topic. Uh, we're going to look at research questions and how you write them. We're going to think about how you scope the project. And then I'm going to finish off by giving you an example that I'm currently working on. OK, so if we start by looking at choosing the topic. Well, lots of people, I think, start their uh, research with no idea. That's a kind of really common problem. You just think, I've just got no idea what I want to research. And then kind of at the opposite end of the, the spectrum, we've got quite a lot of people who think, well, what I really want to do with my research is kind of change the world, save the world. And I, I guess I think that neither of these are really ideal places to be in. So uh, let's think about some places. Okay, so there's lots of ways in which you can uh, think about uh, getting some inspiration for your study. So you can talk to other people, uh, find out what, peop what people would really like to have researched. Obviously, reading uh, other research and writing is really useful, uh, as that can really inspire you. Uh, but looking at the dissertations of previous students can be very interesting, because it gives you an idea both of what kind of topics they covered, but also of uh, the kind of way they went about it. It gives you an idea of the scope. And it can be really helpful, actually, if you can find some students from previous years who you can talk to about it as well. Of course, you want to think about your own interests. This is one of your sort of few opportunities to really explore your own interests. And so it's, it's important that you take this up. Uh, you can also respond to issues in the news. You might have seen something that's going on and think, I wonder how that affects our field. Uh, perhaps you might want to look at, for example, an issue like school cuts. How's that affecting the career guidance world? Well, these are issues that we might want to think about. And of course, you want to reflect on your own practice. What is it that you are interested in? Uh, how do you think your practice could be better? And that can be another useful source of inspiration. So there are lots of things that research can do. Um, you can look at uh, replicating an existing study. So perhaps somebody's done something you think really that is really interesting and you wonder how it would work in UK or perhaps they've done something in a school that you think it would be nice to look at how that would work in an adult setting. Uh, another thing that you can do is explore an under-researched area. Perhaps there's something that you're very interested in that you realise nobody's ever looked at before. Well, that's really worth looking at. You can try and extend a previous study. Uh, so perhaps someone's done some research and you think, you know, I wonder what would happen if they looked at that same issue with girls as well as boys. Uh, or with you know an, another thing that, that would extend their study. So in that case, you might want to draw on some of their methodology. You can review the knowledge in a particular field. Perhaps you're interested in something uh, that you think there's not much written on, and you can look at what people already know. And uh, actually, that in itself can be quite a good study, just doing the literature review part of your work. You can develop or test out a methodology or method. Uh, perhaps there's something that you're interested in. You wonder how it would work out if you did that in, in career guidance. You might want to address a research question uh, in isolation or within a wider program of work. So perhaps you're aware of uh, other things that you might want to do in the future. This might be something that you would do to start off. And of course, one of the really classic things that you can do in research is apply a theoretical idea to a real world problem. So what is it you've been reading about in theory that perhaps you'd be interested to see how it works in practice? So if we now move on to look at the research questions, well, what is a research question? Well, a research question is something that sets out the issue that you're going to be investigating, your argument or thesis, so what you want to prove, disprove or explore, and the limits of your research. So what are you not going to be investigating? So if we look at an example here. So demonstrating that career guidance works is not a very good research question. So let's see if we can make it a bit better. So does career guidance work is much better because it turns it into a question. But it still leaves a lot unsaid. So let's say, does career guidance work in English schools? Well, this is better still. Uh, because it helps us to think about where are we going to do this study. It's not just everywhere in the world, but we're going to look particularly in English schools. OK, and then we say, does career guidance in English schools increase young people's chances of choosing a STEM subject at A-level? Now, that's a much better question because it starts to define what we mean by work. Now, we might not agree with this particular definition of what constitutes career guidance working, but it gives us something that we can actually test 
something we can actually explore. And this idea that specific questions are really critical to the idea of career guidance is very, very useful. So that gives us our idea of, of a research question, and that starts us off really well. But there's quite a bit more that we might want to do. So let's scope out our projects a bit more. And I'm going to think that you can probably do a bit more of this once you start to really think of your project more. So the first thing we want to think about is what's the topic? So this project will study is the question that you might want to answer. Then what's the question or problem? And so that really uh, continues that last sentence with to find out. So what is it you're going to find out? And then we might ask a bit about the significance so that more will be known about and what resources we're we going to use to answer this question. Well, the primary resources, the main data will be and our secondary sources, well, additional data, where will that come from? So that could be that you're using both quantitative and qualitative data, or it could be that you're using secondary resources um, in terms of literature and so on. Then you want to say something about your methods. So how will the research be conducted? And then you want to justify those methods. Why is this method the right one? And then you want to talk about some of those limitations. So what will this study not include? What will it not answer? So, where will you get some, some key questions for you to think about? Where will, you, where will this take place? Will you have to get permission? If you're going to go into a school, for example, you're going to have to get some permission. When? When is it going to take place? How long is it going to take? Have you got time and when will it finish? Who else is going to be involved and who, importantly, isn't going to be involved? How long is it going to go on? How many people are you going to have? involved in it perhaps you're doing a study or you're interviewing young people well how many young people are you going to interview and then how how are you going to do it do you have the access to the population that you're interested in do you have the skills to do it so perhaps you decide you'd love to do a really sophisticated statistical study but if you don't know very much about st statistics that's probably not going to be a good idea so um you need to think all these kinds of questions through as you prepare your study so if you now spend some time uh, planning your project by asking these, these questions, this project will study in order to find out so that more will be known about, the main data will be, additional data comes from, the research will be conducted as follows, the method is most appropriate because, and there are some matters that this methodology may not help me to explain, and these might include. That's a really good shape for your project, and, and, and you can do that after session. I think one of the other things to remember is that a research project is still a project and it's a project much like any other project that you might do and so I've created a Gantt chart here you may find that a useful tool if you're thinking about how to create a, uh, a research project um, but it benefits from these kinds of tools some kind of planning you, you've got to think how long have I got what, what, what do I want to achieve by a particular date what am I going to do after that? What's dependent on what? What can I not start until I've done this task and so on? So I'll give you an example now of one of my projects that, and, and sort of talk you through how it works. So I've been doing a research project which has taken rather longer than I was hoping but uh, it's still going on where I'm exploring international impressions of Nordic education, work and career. So what I'm interested in is what people like you who don't live in the Nordic countries think about the Nordic countries. And so that's that's a project that I sort of got interested in. So why? Well, partly because I've got a job at the Inland Norway University of Applied Sciences, so I'm interested in Nordic uh, career guidance. I've also been editing a, a co-editing a book on Nordic gu guidance with three of my Nordic friends and colleagues. Eric Haag, Rui Thompson, and Jana Kettenen. And I couldn't really think of what I could contribute to this book, as it's difficult for me to do research in Nordic countries for reasons of language and access and so on. And I also re read an interesting paper by Ingrid Bakker, where she talks about the way in which Nordicity is constructed and communicated internationally. This really interested me, this idea of Nordicity, which is seeing the nature of the Nordic countries as an ideology rather than just as a place. And then I think I secretly think of the Nordic countries as a kind of utopia and I wanted to see whether everyone else agreed with that. And also no one else seems to have written on this, so this seems like something worth writing about. So if we work through those questions, so this project will study 
how non-Nordic people view the Nordic education, employment and career systems. To find out whether a clear brand exists for Nordic policy that's understood internationally, so that more will be known about how policies are lent and borrowed and exert influence internationally. The main data will be from a survey which I'll recruit to internationally via social media and international bodies. And additional data will come from the literature on Nordic career guidance and from the literature on Nordicity and wider policy borrowing. The research will be uh, conducted as follows. Uh, our pilot, um, which I went through three phrases when I was doing that, I launched the survey, recruit until uh, March, analyse in Excel, mainly quantitative data, but some qualitative analysis as well, write up and submit to the editors. And this method is most appropriate because it allows for a broad multi-country sample appropriate for more exploratory research. But there are some matters that this methodology may not help me to explain. And this might include, well, so many really. Um, for example, I won't know from this whether the perceptions are accurate, whether they're representative of what wi a wider population might say, whether they really exert influence and so on. So all of these are questions that I'm going to look at in future research. So this is very much an opening piece of research that I'm going to do as part of this particular study. So it's live, this project. If you would like to fill in my survey, that would be great. Um, but what I've been trying to do here is really just give you an example of how I think through a project using those kinds of questions. Um, there's some references here, including a really useful uh, resource uh, from the University of Leicester, which I was sort of vaguely involved in the creation of many, many years ago, but it's, it's very helpful, I think. Um, so to conclude, I think research projects need to be thought through carefully before you start. It's really easy to get too ambitious. Be careful as this will undermine your project's viability over the long term. And remember that a research project is just a brick. It's not the whole house. And so you don't want to try and answer everything in one go. Thank you. These are my contact details. Hopefully uh, uh, you've found some of this interesting. Please do uh, get in touch if you're interested in talking more about this. I'm very happy to talk to people by email or on Twitter and I hope to see you all.